Hello, everybody. Welcome to Body, Mind and Soul, where your whole health matters. I am Jemima Godsell with my co-host, Darcy Mata. Hello, Darcy. We have Hi. a beautiful week, Lady Bug Larson. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And we each week bring topics surrounding mental health, physical and spiritual health. Um, just before we get started, there is a disclaimer down below. Got to get that done. But more importantly, there is a 988 number for mental health help or suicide prevention if you feel like you need to reach out for yourself or anybody else. So you're never alone. But also there is some international numbers down there for Australia and Europe as well. Um, 988, such a great number. I'm so glad they changed the number. Such an easy number to remember. Um, so yay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have a guest. Yay. We love having a guest, don't we, Das? It's so exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're going to hand it over to Ladybug to start talking. And thank you for showing up, Ladybug. We all have a tale to tell, don't we? Um, so what is yours? Why did I ask you? Why are you here? Thank you for you... coming, Ladybug, and sharing your story. Just off yeah. the top, you know, it's it's such an act of bravery to, you know, say, really okay, is. this is what I did and who I am and what happened, et cetera. So it's really appreciated. And somewhere, somebody's going to be inspired by you. We already totally. are. <laughs> yeah, of course. So much. Um, so I do have planes flying overhead. Is that impacting the sound at all? Okay, cool. No, you're fine. I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Um, so thank you, Jemima, and thank you, Darcy, for having me on. Uh, what a what a treat, and especially acknowledging the the comfort in my skin to be here because that hasn't always been the case. Um, I do still have, have one, two people in my life that try to um, kind of throw some of my past life experiences back at me in hurtful ways. And it used to hurt and it doesn't today because I, I do fully accept and appreciate those experiences for where they've brought me. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, so I started, I guess I can start like growing up super quick. Uh, I had a father who was, uh, physically and psychologically abusive. And so that is the majority of my childhood trauma. I actually have repressed memories the first nine years of my life, uh, which was the nine years that my parents were married. And then when my parents divorced and I didn't have my dad in my life anymore, that's when I start having memories. Um, and so for many years, for until I was in my late 20s, I didn't even know that I had an abusive childhood. Sure. It wasn't until uh, I was in couples counseling and the therapist asked me to get to know what my relationship was like with my dad growing up that. I reached out to my family and they shared with me this, this history of trauma that I have. And, um, and so the nature of that psychological and physical abuse really did a number on my self-worth, uh, did a number on my self-esteem, my ability to love and accept myself. Um, and, I had been playing out these old patterns for decades without realizing that that's what I was doing. And so this is one of the benefits of therapy <laughs> is, you know, pointing, allowing us to see the patterns. And if we can see where they come from, then it's a little bit easier to heal them. Um, although I do hold that it's not necessary to know, like I still don't have actual memories of my childhood and I haven't needed those memories in order to heal. Right. Um, so this lack of self-worth, uh, lack of self-esteem got me to a place of deep codependence in my relationships with others. And I found myself in my late 20s, early 30s in a relationship with someone who was an alcoholic and a drug addict. Mm -hmm. And as a codependent human, I became, I fell into that addiction and, and those habits. Yeah. And so not only was I codependent, I also was addicted to drugs and alcohol. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, oftentimes we bond from our wounds, right? We find someone, we bond right from our wounds. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. 
And so that was where I found myself uh, in 2014. So I'm 40 years old right now. Um, I turned 41 later this year. And so in 2014, I entered into this relationship and I am so deeply, deeply fortunate that this relationship only lasted for two years, <laughs> that this relationship brought me into addiction really deeply and then really quickly brought me out of it. Um, and, and I have a tremendous amount of gratitude for this person uh, who was, I mean, that relationship was so incredibly toxic and without it, I would not have seen the possibility. I wouldn't have experienced the depth of my shadow that I experienced um, and been given the opportunity to heal it without this relationship, without the experience of addiction. Um, and where addiction ultimately took me was to this place of suicidality mm. where I was, I could see that my life was crumbling around me, that my relationships were, were all falling apart, that I was getting ready to lose my job. I was about to be evicted. Um, and and I just didn't see a way out of it. Right. And my way out of it was to swallow a bottle of sleeping pills. And I had this, this gift of spirit, like my, my spirit, my highest self. I, I tossed back that bottle of pills and chewed them up and swallowed them. Wow. And then had this immediate sober moment and said, that was not a good idea. I actually don't want to die. Hmm. And so I called 911 on myself. And wow. then, and I laid in bed and let the sleeping pills begin to take effect until the paramedics got there. I just kind of surrendered to that experience. Um, well, the paramedics got there. One of the questions they asked was, are there any kids in the house? Hmm. And my son was in the house at the time. Uh, he was sleeping. Um, I was drunk and high at the time. I had substances in, in my system. Um, and I had swallowed a bottle of sleeping pills all uh, while my son was in my care. And uh, so I was on a 72 hour hold, 5150. I was reported to CPS. And while I was in the hospital, my son's dad filed for emergency custody. Oops. So, yeah. so I got, I literally, the day that I was released from the hospital was standing in front of a judge fighting for custody of my son and knowing that I wasn't in any place to really care for him. But he also was the only thing that was keeping me any kind of desire to live. Mm, wow. And so that was, that was a really hard bottom for me. Yeah. Um, really hard. Really hard. Yeah. That right. was a really hard bottom. That's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And so the judge awarded temporary custody to dad and suggested that I get support for my addiction and said, we'll come back here in six months and reassess. And I could not live without my son. And he was the driving force for me getting sober. So I went immediately into a 12 step program. I didn't go into recovery or rehab, um, any like recovery programs, inpatient or outpatient. Um, but I did start going to 12 step meetings, right. um, sometimes like two or three times a day. Mm -hmm. And those gave me hope. They gave me community. They gave me those meetings gave me like a, a simple process <laughs> to get myself back up to the ground floor. Right. And so I began to 
I began to rebuild my life a little bit. Um, after six weeks, it didn't even take three months. After six weeks, I had custody of my son back. Wow. Congratulations. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's a lot of strength right there, man. That's wonderful. It was, yeah, it was really hard. Yeah. It was really hard. Um, 12 step programs are all about spirituality, spiritually based programs. Right. And that was always a really tough thing for me growing up. Mm -hmm. you know, the spirituality is a big part of, of my life today. Um, and growing up, I just, I couldn't do religion. I couldn't do God. Like it just didn't make sense to me. Right. Uh, but I saw the benefit that others would get out of it. And so I would periodically try <laughs> if I could find something that made sense because I could see the benefit of it if I could find it. And <laughs> what the 12 step programs gave me an opportunity to find spirituality that worked for me. So that, that is probably the biggest, biggest thing that I got from 12 step recovery. I'm no longer in 12 step recovery. Uh, I don't even identify as a person in recovery anymore. Um, so this was 2016 that I got, that I got sober. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Ladybug. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's funny is I, <laughs> more than anything else, the date that I remember is the date that I attempted to take my life. Right. And, and I acknowledge that every year, every year I acknowledge like, this, this is when I tried to take my life and, and look at how far I've come. And so 12 step recovery got me kind of the ground floor and I could feel that there was more. I just didn't know what it was. And I had been meeting with a person who is my spiritual co-counsel now. His name is Brad. I love him dearly. I still meet with him every single week for 90 minutes. And um, he had just stepped on to the plant medicine path. And he also was, was someone in recovery who I knew through a 12 step program. And that intrigued me. And so I looked into ayahuasca. I was taking pharmaceuticals at the time. So they weren't an option for me then but I just knew that ayahuasca was going to be helpful. And so I began to taper off of my pharmaceuticals that I had been taking for depression and anxiety after about a year in 12 step program. And I actually microdosed cannabis to come off of my pharmaceuticals. I found these really cool pens called dosist pens. And uh -huh. so you take a dose is one to three pulls, but you pull and it cuts off. So you okay. can actually hear how much. Mm. So the dose, I was microdosing cannabis in order to come off of pharmaceuticals. That process took about a year. Okay. And once I was off of pharmaceuticals, I had my first sit with ayahuasca. Um, my experience with that medicine in that ceremony was nothing. <laughs> I felt like I had no experience at all. Um, but then I came back to life and six weeks later, I was chucking cinder blocks across my property, screaming this primal scream that had me terrified. And I was on the phone with Brad, my co-counsel telling him that I had no idea who I was. I said, I can tell you what people call me, but I don't know my name. I can tell you that I take actions that indicate that I love my son, but I can't tell you if I love my son. I can't tell you what my favorite color is. I can't tell you if I like my job. I can't tell you if I like my clothes. Like I was completely empty. Mm. And Brad said, well, what is one thing that you do know? And... I sat for maybe 30 seconds in silence. And finally I said that the only thing I can say for certain, I know for sure is that I don't know anything. And that was where I started. Beautiful, it's kind of like a rebirth. 
Yeah. Absolutely like a rebirth. Absolutely. You know, embracing that, understanding that it's all beyond us, and yet we're an integral part of it's all makeup. So mm -hmm. it might be beyond us, but it can't exist without us, and vice versa, right? Yes. So yeah, exactly. Profound understanding. That's a big, profound understanding. And to accept it, not just to understand it, but to accept it. Yeah, it did. It. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really hard. I faked it like. Oh, we lost uh, it. Yeah, there we are. Can oh, you say that again? Repeat that? Yes. Yeah, so so I faked it like I accepted it. And that uh -huh. seemed to work. And so I just I just kept moving through, reminding myself it's okay that I don't know anything, allowing the emptiness. And when I did that, I also found that I needed community. Right. So I started an integration circle um, in 2018 that is still going today in San oh, Diego. Great. It's an in-person integration circle in San Diego um, that I started because I needed community. I knew that there was no way, right? And one of the big things about 12-step recovery also is the community right? It's the fellowship. It's being around people who are on a similar path. And so I started this integration circle. Um, I absolutely love it. It's my church. <laughs> and community supported me through this first, well, second dark night of the soul. I, I like to say that my first dark night of the soul was, was my bottom in addiction or even like the addiction itself, okay. like the spiritual desolation and not knowing, um, and that feeling of suicidality, the attempt to, to end my life, mm -hmm. uh, was a dark night that I pulled myself out of through community. And then the second one, I also, I pulled myself out of it with community. I just built people around me. I pulled people in, um, who were willing to support me. Right. Right. That's beautiful. That's that's so inspirational, Lady Ladybug. That's like, and especially that you created this community for yourself, but now it's still going because others need it just as much, and, and it's it, it continues to help yourself, but help other people. And now you're the leader of it too, with your wisdom <laughs> and your experience. You know, you lead people in that same sort of story that you've gone through. I mean, that's yeah. such an inspiration. Look, look how far you've come. Bloody hell! Wow. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just been this, um, yeah, this ongoing journey of understanding who I am, finding safety in my body, realizing that uh, that every maladaptive coping mechanism, every defense mechanism, is the result of not feeling safe in my body because mm, yeah. because of trauma. Yeah. Yeah. So my whole journey has been how do I how do I find that cultivate that safety in my body and how do I accept all of these parts of me how do I accept all of the all of the anger how do I accept all the actions that I've taken how do I accept all of these things um and and really really trust myself and love myself and so that's that's where I am today <laughs> wow, beautiful thank you for your share thank you so much for your share ladybug Wow, um, that's so so amazing. It's so amazing to see your big beautiful smile and to say that you're still working on it and you're show, you know, sharing your resiliency and your difficulties. I can't thank you enough for that, Sherry. Your commitment to self, yeah, your commitment to self and for your son as well. Like I mean, it's just so beautiful that yeah. it's uh, you know, he must be so proud of you. So proud to see this change around. And you know that it, you can recover. You know it's so inspiring when you're around people who do recover and come out of it and really move forward and beyond. And that's that is a chapter closed behind them. You know because it just doesn't. It, but they had to go through that to come to where they are now. As you said, with your two-year relationship, you know, you wouldn't. You're so grateful in a way for it to happen because you wouldn't have known what you do now, and the enlightenment you've had from it. Um, Ladybug, if you were to say this is a loaded question, spot question. Didn't tell you I was going to ask you. <laughs> Sorry, oh, if, you will, if someone asks, what's one thing you'd like to tell someone who's in a similar place that you were in? Um, is there any sort of 
key point that would have been like something that you would have gone, oh, thank you, I needed to hear that at that point mm. of recovery, of, of enlightenment, of, of coming out of it. I know, loaded question. You can hate me later. <laughs> you know, what's, what's tricky about that question is that when I was in that space, there was nothing that anybody could say right. that, that could get through to me at all. And yeah. so for me, it really was and continues to be about presence mm. and, and people being present with me. Right. And so every so often I will have a conversation with someone who is, is feeling actively suicidal or really, really deep in depression. And, and I, I offer to, to be present with them. Like, how would it feel if I just, if I came over to your house and I just did my own thing? I read a book, I did some work and you can just be you. Or would you like to come over to my house? Or do you want to hang out at a park? And like, there's no pressure to talk. There's no pressure to be happy. Just like, can, mm -hmm. can I be with you? That's beautiful. And that, that you know, on its own. That's amazing. That's, that's amazing. So yeah. Well, that in itself yeah. is so profound, you know, yeah. and that's because we are social creatures and, you know, our, you know, we ruminate on things when we are alone and then the pressure to have to be okay, you know, and, and et cetera. And so just being present, that is just profound, really mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah, it's true. And it's so it's, hard. Yeah. It can be so hard to ask people yeah. to be present. But I would say if, if you have the ability to ask someone to come over or if you can go over there or if they yeah. can all and just be silent friend right like you know that that really just having another human hold space just silent space where whatever it is is, is acceptable is that is has been for me yeah yeah, yeah I see holding that. that space mm -hmm. mm. right oh wow ladybug what an inspiration you are thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story of trauma to triumph like it's it's just really it's such a admirable journey that you've been on and continue to go through and you continue to work with yourself and understand that there is more work to be done and you seem to be excited about it and that's beautiful yeah. I mean you know, excited today maybe not tomorrow but that's the thing I love I, I love not getting to know you because it is you, you, as we said when I said when I first saw you this weekend was 100% authentic you like me we want to show up 100% authentic and that's warts and all dips and all but it's real and it's true and it's and it's um it's the way that you, you remain present, as you were saying, the presence and being here now is so important, so right. important. Um, Das, do you have any questions, my love, or anything to say? No, you know, I, I just really love the idea that you talk about community and, you know, the idea, you know, I think some of the challenges for us as modern individuals is that we're, it's so spread out. Everything is so spread out. We're so separated. You know, we don't have, necessarily tribes or you know group growing up anymore everything is just so much in transit that our isolation our loneliness and we don't understand like you said you didn't know you were traumatized because that's all you knew how could you know that these things were not right so re-establishing a community that works for you is just the most important thing that we can do now for each ourselves. And if someone is listening to this and they're going, well, you know, I don't like church and I, I know my family and I don't communicate. I totally get that. That's kind of the problem. Church is changing. It's not the same for everybody. I grew up Catholic and I haven't stepped into a Catholic church in eons because it doesn't resonate with me anymore, but I still need community and we all need community. And that is how we keep each other, you know, healthy is yeah. by being present and be you know holding the space and you know busting each other and saying i see you you know that kind of thing so brilliant good for you good yeah. for you i know i know during covid isolation when i was stepping out of my suicide attempt at that stage what saved me was meet up on well i was isolated you know we were all isolated i was in a strange town and i'm coming out of my suicide attempt with two cats going what the hell but meet up with all this community every day I had 12 hours a day back-to-back -back meetings of spiritual revelations and it was amazing i don't know how i discovered it but it's really helped me 
where, where have you gone really helped me come through and um yeah. it was about there you are it was about community you know about the having and also being held accountable for showing up you know being held accountable to be present and to because then someone would go where are they they'd be worried and they want to reach out and so it's like just reminding yourself that you know it, it's um it's it just just very important to have that human interaction and that support network and to be authentic and to not feel like you have to be on point all the time it just it's right. such a great place to be that's why darcy is my co-host because <laughs> i'm i'm a loop <laughs> anyway um ladybug thank you so much we, we are coming to a head lovely ladies Darcy, and i saw you shuffling the cards are you able to pull a card from our lovely ladybug today yes you're gonna laugh so ladybug i pull a card every <laughs> You know, we just kind of develop this thing and you know and i'm and my thing is always like what is it that we want to you know give a last moment message to ladybug from the cards so today i use diana cooper's cards and um because we're in nature i use these um animal angel cards she does this combination of animals and angels together which is really kind of well, so I thought, oh, that resonates. And interestingly enough, the card that fell out is dog, okay. which is about be disciplined in your home and community life. Oh, how funny. Dogs, dogs in, in Native American um, tradition are about companionship. And in ours, you know, it's all about that unconditional love. So I think that's just yeah. kind of really fantastic. Kind of spot on. <laughs> right? Be disciplined in your home and community life. So all canines, wolves, foxes, domestic hounds originate from Sirius, the gold ray of Christ. They incarnate to bring this unconditional love energy to earth and to pass on this pure light to other animals and people. Dogs are mainly learning about various forms of family structure that kind of hits right okay the spiritual purpose of domestic dogs is to be companions to humans they have surrendered the familiarity of their own kind to support us they have surrendered they have surrendered the familiarity of their own kind to support us they are giving and receiving love while learning and teaching about discipline and loyalty Foxes are learning the art of adaptability, whereas wild dogs are developing independence, resourcefulness, courage, and a sense of adventure. All dogs are loyal to their families and selflessly protective. When you receive this card, um, you are invited to look at the structure of your family life and your friendships, including those with work colleagues. Are you loyal to each other? Do you respect each other? Do you relate to each other for the highest good? Are you disciplined or chaotic in your lifestyle? You know, the word discipline, I have a couple issues with, but you can interpret that how you like. Um, it's just such a harsh word. You know, I might say, are you committed, right? Um, your family reflects you. So are you loyal to yourself? Do you respect yourself? Do you make your choices for your highest good? You are reminded that spiritual discipline is the foundation of true happiness and joy, or spiritual commitment, rather. It is the keystone to ascension. The dog card wants you to know that when you consistently practice your spiritual techniques, you can be adaptable, courageous, and develop a sense of adventure and fun. Your entire life can expand based on this solid foundation as self-control confers safety, right? That's the foundation. Self-control confers safety. And you can walk forward in bliss, bliss and joy. What? Kind well, of fitting. If you ever <laughs> listened to by the spirits, I think that's a pretty wonderful way to confirm yeah. all that you are saying. Totally, yeah. Ladybug. Beautiful. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, thank you so much again, Ladybug, for showing up and congratulations on your journey, my fine friend. You are such a warrior and I'm so proud of you and I'm, I'm really great to be interacting with you in our healing journey together. Yeah, it's been great. I know that you're supported by all the angels. Yeah, thank totally. You. What a gift to meet you. I look forward to chatting again at some point. Yeah, yeah sure. Come on and play again. Yay. 
Um, <laughs> all right, everyone, <laughs> we're out of here. Take care. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and we'll catch you next week with another guest, I think. Thank you, Ladybug, again. Mwah. Take care, everyone. Peace out. Bye. Bye. Dear.